where I was going with this is um, I believe this is a made up disease. That's my this is my position right now. Uh, this is a 100% made up disease. People don't have this. Um, and if there was anybody who ever had this, I have not seen a case study that I believe. And I'm, and I'm not saying I've seen a lot of case studies. That's I found one case study um, by looking online and I don't have access to all kinds of professional materials or anything like that, that, a, you know, actual psychologist or psychiatrist would have. Uh, and I welcome anybody who wants to, you know, help me in that because I actually want to learn. Is this a real thing even? Because I think it's not. And there's other reasons why I think it's not, you know, have to do with its history, the way it's described. And here's another interesting thing about it is um, there was the dream that I had of Brett on um, February 13th, 1988, where the bus was marked for DD. And doctors, you know, from the readings that I have done on this do, in fact, refer to delusional disorder as DD. So, um... That's actually a huge thing for that dream, especially, you know, and I've described, I have another video. I'll go link to my other videos. I know I've talked about what I thought DD meant, and I still, I think that that's correct. I think that there are often in these dreams, which are coded, the way they are coded is that there is usually, I figure, around three meanings. I can affect, I can expect to find around three meanings in any important symbol. So delusional disorder, the D is um, linked to the number four. The bus was 4DD. In a later dream, Brett tells me he's working for the emperor, which is number four in tarot. I didn't know, as I said, what the emperor meant in 1996 when I had that dream. You know, and I, I certainly had never heard of delusional disorder, which, as my reading, says to me that it was only officially included in the DSM beginning in 1987. And that before, uh, it's somehow linked to paranoia. So they might have called it paranoia before. But now instead of just paranoia, it's sort of like this thing where there's subtypes, right? And the subtypes include something called erotomanic, believing another person is in love with you. Um, grandiose where you think you are great but unrecognized you have some greater unrecognized talent or insight having made some important discoveries like for example and this is where we get to the gaslighting okay and this is why this this one of the many reasons i think this is a bombshell i mean i think i don't think this is a real thing and not only that and i'd love to again please correct me but you have to use evidence um I think it's kind of a joke, uh, but it's not funny because it can be used to, um, it can be used to, um, ruin people's lives. It can be used, you know, to, to completely discredit somebody who's trying to, um, call attention to a crime, including, you know, a crime that's affecting them. And the only case study that I've seen, that's my question, was that patient actually describing a crime that had happened to him and the doctors um saying he and I, there's no way to know that because of the way the case study is written there's no not there's essentially no specifics just generalizations so you can't tell exactly how the doctors determined you know that the patient was even delusional so um this is all really fascinating because I do think gaslighting is a big part of this. And I'm not sure, you know, now I'm seeing that gaslighting is actually, you know, um, seems to be very, a lot of interest to psychologists. They seem to be really the ones that I've encountered since 2014, but also I see here in the writing because, you know, to say if, if I'm correct, and this is mostly a made up disease, um, you know, I'm serious. Um, then that would be an important discovery. Therefore, we've, we're in an endless loop there. It's a catch-22. Uh, and moving right along, there's a jealous type. Uh, this is, you know, and this is interesting too, because this just seems like a normal kind of concern that people have, but maybe, you know, again, supposedly to even be diagnosed, you have to have a significant you know, dysfunction in your life, okay, going on. So there are probably some people who are extremely jealous all the time, possibly because they've been traumatized in some way by somebody. You know, I mean, I think there, there might be a reason for that when people do behave that way. 
um, that they've had experiences with people who are di- who are um, unfaithful or who are dishonest, deceptive, right? And that creates a little bit of an extra suspicion, perhaps. Um, so that's an interesting kind of thing to have as a subtitle of this um, alleged uh, condition. And so then there's the persecutor type. Now this is what I was what what they wrote down about me is that I had persecutory delusions. Um, and they wrote that because I was experiencing um, organized stalking, I think. But, you know, interestingly, I, I don't recall what I said exactly to psychologists in once I was in a hospitalized state. And they were giving me drugs that affected my memory. Um, and I think and I now know they were also attacking me with um, frequency based weapons. There's no question that they were doing that. So. But they, you know, the notes that I've gotten from from them, I have to, I'll have to look back. But I don't think that there's a whole lot in those from me. I, f- I feel like it's more generalized stuff that there isn't a whole lot of sort of quotes or anything. But I'll have, to, I'll have to look into that. But you know, generally speaking, to even be hospitalized, I I didn't say anything that would have ever made anybody think that I had. Other than the other than I was complaining about. Um, Surveillance. That was the only thing I complained about to anybody who um, who asked that I was um, that I had discovered evidence of surveillance going on, and um, you know, as a mother, this was a lot of concern. Now, a lot of other stuff was going on around that. Um, there was a lot of gaslighting going on, but um, without investigating that or even listening to the evidence that I had. That's when the delusion, the, the words delusion started to be applied to me. And the first one to do it, as far as I can tell, was, um, it was some somewhere between the doctor and the police in Portland. Um, it's not clear because one of them said the other said something. So you never know who's who said what exactly. But then it eventually became a medical diagnosis. Never anybody ever investigating why I was first called delusional, which was basically I was complaining about surveillance going on. Um, but it, it was it was kind of dropped for a few months, but then it was brought back. And I think the reason it was brought back is because I was posing a threat to the surveillance system. <laughs> you know, that's really the truth. So then um, there's a somatic, and that has to do with body functions and sensations, which is very much something that can be very precisely manipulated with um, frequency-based weaponry. Um, so that's why I think this is a made-up disease, because it appears to me to be almost... Um, tailor-made to frame certain people who might be causing certain other people difficulties. Um, And that some of these might be more just mistakes, you know, having to do with, um, you know, romantic feelings where somebody's maybe overly jealous or um, reading too much, projecting too much, say, into a, a love interest. Um, the other ones, I'm not sure where that, you know, but, but it just, you know, that's why I question, well, what does this actually look like? Because it just doesn't seem like something I've ever seen or really heard of. Um, and then they get into this thing with bizarre versus non bizarre delusions. And, and so, um, there's, there's a lot that, you know, you could go to a very granular level level and, and critique this, but I just basically, you know, my thing was I wanted to, um, learn what it was so that I could make the argument and, you know, use supporting evidence that I, you know, there's no reason I ever should have been diagnosed with it. But then I became very interested in whether it actually even is a thing um, that, you know, real people have. But the DD is important. Um, And um, this, actually, it's really serious. Okay, so because it's used, um, what I see it, being used for with me, meaning if it's being used for this way for me, it it could be being used this way for other people. And I think it might be, is that it's being used to cover a really serious crime that involves the medical field. Um, and this crime includes deliberately manipulating people's bodies and brains with frequency based, you know, devices. Um, for the purposes of 
lots of purposes. Like um, usually things just as the symbols have three different meanings, there's often three different purposes for something that I'm learning. So um, these um, people are being manipulated in order to manipulate just situations like maybe um, political situations, which is kind of what happened with Brett and I. Um, well, I mean, I was going to be in this place, but Brett um, seems to have been sort of shooted, cattle shooted into this um, very disturbing role um, that also was completely controlled with um, frequency-based devices. But there, there was money being made. That's the thing about this. There's, this is a profit, um, just as he said in that dream to me in 1996, profit sharing. So some people are making money somehow from this. And I imagine there's a different bunch of different ways that that happens. You know, it, Brett was clearly trafficked in a comatose state to people linked with the entertainment industry. Okay, I know that. Um, so that's one way they could have been making money. And, and how that all came about, you know, the only way, the best way I could know to explain it would be this relationship of the magician plus number three. Does that mean it's all the magician that's to blame for this, you know, or the magician's team? And I think that's the direction I've been pushed. Naturally, a person wants to actually hold, for example, if a person is being misdiagnosed deliberately by a doctor, you want to hold that doctor responsible for doing that. Okay, even if the doctor was told by somebody, you know, higher up in, even a higher up, you know, his boss in the, his or her boss in the, or their boss in the hospital system, you need to do this. Um, you know, of course, there's rewards and punishments that go along with you need to do this. Um, but even if they were being told by a higher up, they're, you know, the modern way of looking at things is that you have a responsibility of a professional responsibility of an ethical responsibility of a legal responsibility and all those things. You don't get to be told, you know, there's a point where you have to say no to the higher up. It appears that people have been convinced in this game for, through various means that they don't have the, that, that level of um, autonomy. So, um, that's real troublesome. But it does mean, you know, there's, t it's like there's, you know, and so it means that, that discovering stuff like this is a pretty big deal, especially if I can show it. Um, and I can, you know, it, it, there's a lot to, you know, really dissect, but, you know, this thing falls apart pretty quick from my perspective. It certainly falls apart quick in my life. Um. But um, profits are being made and people are being prevented from um, calling attention to real crimes because, you know, one of the ways, one of the ways is false diagnosis. And then meanwhile, okay, what I noticed that they did with me is actually diagnose me with things that I just thought were completely ridiculous and ludicrous. But then I realized over time they were actually trying to create behavior in me that would mimic the conditions they had already diagnosed me with. And so when I went back into my medical records, I saw that had been going on. There had been a, you know, progressive sort of pushing. And one of the things that is happening, you know, um, is um, them, you know, manipulating me with these weapons. And then, you know, meanwhile, smearing me with um, misdiagnoses, which means that, you know, I'm not to be believed, basically. I, you know, that's that's basically what the message that they're trying to, to, to put across. So um, discovering this is a big deal, and these people do appear to be very powerful. I guess, is you know, I don't know if it's entirely because they're paired with a magician or something else. It probably has a lot to do with the, the size of the crime. So then I have a series of, you know, I did write down some dreams every single night. I haven't read them. And so now that's what I'm going to do. So starting on 10, 10 at 11.04 a.m., I wrote down, this girl sends me out to get some stuff for her, <laughs> including tights. I'm making a list of things she says she wants. I'm about to go when I realize I don't know which tights she, what size tights she wears. 
Her legs are skinny or bony. She's wearing tights. They're black, and I see all this shifting writing on them. Something in the writing is linked to the medical industry. I see the word die on her or near her right knee. So a song that I got in my head just right after writing that was I, Me, Mine, which is a Beatles song. And um, before I s fell asleep, the song that had come to me was You Can't Always Get What You Want, Rolling Stones, and especially the line, she said one word to me, and that was dead. Um, and by the way, I think there's a, a few meanings in that. One of them, I think, is the Grateful Dead. And then in the evening at 10:14 p.m. was this also the evening? Just want to know. This was like sorry. For, this was like a situation where I probably just laid down for a second and had that as an image. Um, I just think I get the idea of fur. 2:01 a.m. Dream of all this violence linked to dating. In the end, I beat up someone who deserves it. Bad enough, but not too bad. The person was standing in my way, creating bad situations. 9.31 a.m. Okay, so I'm going on about the delusional disorder thing. So this is this was really, over the past several days, really kind of coming to me. Not just delusional disorder, but also the targeted individual phenomenon. You know, it's not a phenomenon. It is, um, let's see, what... I think uh, I think that it might be a type of op, right? Type of disinformation campaign that involves a lot of different people um, with a common goal. So that's another thing. But that that's another thing that I was beginning to understand, like what that was all about finally. Which because it's um, it's not that the things that targeted individuals say happens to them doesn't happen. It's just that it's not the way that they're talking about it. So it's disinformation. So that's something to talk about at another time. I'm, I'm just about ready, I think, to sort of come to some conclusions about that. 